The Minister for Women Affairs and Social Development, Aisha Alassane, has resigned from the federal cabinet. She resigned today, barely two days after the All Progressives Congress, APC, disqualified her from contesting in the party's governorship primaries. In her letter of resignation addressed to the president, she lamented her disqualification from contesting for the APC governorship ticket in Taraba State. The former minister described it as a grave injustice, noting that she had been a loyal member of the party since 2014. In a separate letter to the Sakin Dawanki ward chairman of the APC, she also informed him of her decision to quit the ruling party, APC, because she had been disqualified from running for the governorship seat in Taraba State. She has, however, joined a new political party, the United Democratic Party, UDP. Grassroot mobilizer and frontline female politician in Imo State, Philomena Desmond Ogugwa, has declared her intentions to run for the Eliazu Izinite MBC federal constituency in Imo State under the platform of the All Progressive Ground Alliance, ABGA. The U.S. trained business development consultant says her enviable wealth of experience over the years within and outside the country in politics, governance and administration will surely be needed at a time like this to give effective representation to her people. She says the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, remains the best party that can give the never dividends of democracy to the people of Imo State. She also advised the leadership of the party to ensure that the right people are given the ticket to emerge as candidates. I have known how governance works. I can go to United Nations and fight. I can go to UNESCO. I can go to all the different agencies, that bodies that make up United Nations. And I can, I can go to other multilateral and bilateral agencies. I don't have to wait for what they call sharing of things they do in Nigeria, which is very funny. Each time they say they're sharing, instead of using that to change the lives of people. I know where to go and get things for my federal constituency. I know how to add value, create more jobs, create more opportunities, and also create more business people, viable business people. And business people that are in my constituency, I know how to carry them along so that their business can grow. Apart from my being qualified, my CV, my bio tells us all that I have worked both locally and internationally to be the right candidate. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, has met with the APC governorship aspirant, Mr. Babajide Songwolu, and the former commissioner, Mr. Femi Hamzat. The meeting held after the presidential primary elections at Etiosa local government area. Mr. Songwo Lu will challenge Governor Kim Miambodi at the APC governorship primary elections for the, for the party's ticket. The vice president also met with some APC party faithful during his visit to the nation's commercial capital. Nigeria's education sector has witnessed her share of twists and turns in the last 58 years, from the changes in the curriculum to the decay in the state of infrastructure, industrial actions for funding, and recently attacks on academic institutions by insurgents. As we continue our focus on Nigeria's Independence Day celebration, our correspondent Gloria Mwizuke takes a look at the education sector. Overcrowded, dilapidated, and ill-equipped. Gunshots replace the sound of school bells. Some of the features of today's education system. Quality education remains a distant stream for many children across the country. Too many are either out of school or receiving inadequate education. The hope for educational reforms reawakened after independence in 1960. In September 1969, a national curriculum conference held in Lagos recommended a 6334 system. 
The system later transited to 934 in 2006 and 16634 system in 2013. Aside from the inconsistency in the system of education, funding has been a major problem. In the last decade, the education sector has received only 3.9 trillion out of 55 trillion naira of the national budget, representing 7% of the total allocation, a far cry from the 26% recommended by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. The gap between education policies and implementation for national development has become a growing concern for many. The result after 58 years of very reforms. At independence, public schools used to be better than private schools. And it was very competitive. Getting into them was very competitive. And they had the best teachers. They had the best equipment. And their results were like 100%. And the government spared no effort to provide all that was needed. But you see, with the um, discovery of oil and the expansion of the economy from 1976 upwards, with the introduction of universal free primary education in 1976 and the first cohort of that scheme coming into secondary schools in 1982 and coming into university in 1988, the system just kept expanding. And there's nothing wrong with expansion, but it's like cooking. If, if you cook for two people and you put one cube of Maggi, if you cook for four, you should put four, two cubes of Maggi. Nigeria has struggled through decades to chart a new course in its basic and tertiary education system amidst incessant strikes, protests, kidnappings and violence. Way back in the, uh, the late 80s, we have, been, we have been shouting, we have been crying that the quality was on the path of steady decline. It appeared, it took a long time for government to agree with us. When they eventually agreed, we went, to, we went around Nigerian public universities, 72, 73 of them. We saw dry laboratories, laboratories where they were using water from the buckets to perform experiments. You can imagine the kind of result they will get. So we, uh, when we talk that Nigerian government has been paying lip service to uh, quality education in this country, it's because we have seen it. We have seen the good, the bad, and now we're experiencing the ugly. Development spiraled downwards, culminating into a crisis such that inevitably called for a state of emergency in 2018. With an estimated 13.2 million children out of school, high illiteracy level, infrastructural deficit and decay, unqualified teachers, and inadequate instructional materials, to mention more of the challenges, we can clearly see the effect of decades of neglect that the education sector has suffered. In spite of several interventions by government in terms of funding and policy changes, the sector still begs for greater attention with insurgency, especially in the Northeast, and a growing population compounding the setback in the sector. The labor market continues to suffer for this. Ten years ago, also, we didn't know about all these um, security challenges that we are facing now. The environment and all kinds of things coming, the drugs now, young ones going into drugs and, and, and so on. These are issues now that I imagine, which we have to, before you make a well-rounded Nigerian, that person should know about the effects of all these kind of things. That is why we completely now change the structure. The kind of education system you went through is not the kind of education system that a child goes through now. Now, it's more dangerous actually if you produce people who are educated and yet you don't give them jobs. That's why we have sophisticated crimes like kidnapping or cyber crimes. These are not committed by out of school children. The UN Sustainable Development Goal 4 targets inclusive and equitable quality education, but Nigeria in its 58th year appears to be miles away from achieving that. It behoves on the relevant authorities to rise to the challenge and change the course of events in the sector to guarantee sustainable development. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News.
Let's take this discussion further and joining me live from our studios in Abuja is the pioneer vice-chancellor of the Michael Opara University of Agriculture, Umudike in Abia State, Professor Placid yeah. Unjoku. Many thanks for joining us. Now looking at Nigeria's educational development since independence, would you say the system is getting better or worse? Thank you, Melinda. Thank you, Nigerians. Um, I think this circumstance we face is uh, quite a difficult one. By 1960, when Nigeria became independent, we had just about five, six, five universities. And the population of those universities was less than 5,000 students. Today, we have 152 universities, and the population is about 1.9 million. I think while we have tried to increase the numbers, we have not matched those numbers with quality. Quality facilities, quality teaching, quality curriculum. I, I think that Nigeria must go back and do some very basic things. Uh, frankly, by 1960, those who went to school then knew that they were going through very um, useful, very rich academic programs. Today, our students in our institutions very often don't even see the lecturer who is teaching them. Very often, they stay in hostels that are in very bad states, and so on. I know there's a very urgent need to increase the number of students that must go to higher institutions. But we need to do that very effectively. We need to work on the issue of quality of facilities, issue of quality of resources. And I think to do this, we want to recognize, I want to recognize a couple of things. One, at the tertiary level, most students, all students, in public institutions have tuition-free uh, education. But what happens in effect is that while they are there on tuition-free education, government does not fund the institutions for the aspect of, or the, aspect of uh, the fees which these students would have paid. I think it's important for government to start making specific provisions to ensure that these students, that their fees are paid. That's one. Secondly, I think that the curriculum in our institutions must be reviewed, more actively reviewed, to, to be made relevant to the current needs of society. But the, like if I may also will recognize that if I may, quite if the I may universities turn out about 500,000 now, the introduction of private schools, colleges, and universities was meant to address some of these problems, you said so yourself, but do you think the goal is being achieved? The private universities have come in, and quite a number of them, very few of them, in fact, have met specific standards. One is very pleased with the rep current report we had in the last week that Covenant University is among three Nigerian universities, along with the University of Ibadan and the University of Nigeria, that have made the, that are in the list of the top 1,250 universities in the world. So there are good private universities in Nigeria that are doing quite well. But there, the the problem with private universities for now is that many of them do not have the resources they require to actually run the kind of programs that they ought to run. The quality of teachers that they require to teach very effectively. The quality of research facilities they require to be able to train those students and also to develop new knowledge. So while they are taking in some students, they are actually not breaking the back of the challenge of higher education in Nigeria. Professor Njoku, it was a pleasure having you on the News at 10.